setting prices is really, really, really hard because you never know if you're doing it right. How do I even decide what this is worth? It's hard. How are you supposed to even do that? Well, that's exactly what we're talking about today. Hey, everyone, and welcome to Business Bootcamp. I'm Christy Wright, best-selling author, certified business coach, keynote speaker, and most of all, your bossy big sister here to give you the practical steps you want and the tough love truth you need to succeed in business. So let's dive in. Now, today we're talking about setting prices. Out of, out of the gate, let's just acknowledge that setting prices is really, really really hard. It's kind of like raising kids. Like you're expected to know how to do it, but you don't know how to do it. And no one's ever taught you. And you're just never sure if you're doing it right. Right? Like it's kind of like parenting. Setting prices is hard. It's not objective. It's subjective. There are a million variables that go into setting prices. And no matter what you do, you never arrive at this perfect price where you just feel like, ah, this is it. I have arrived, I have made it, this is perfect. You're always kind of questioning, is this the right price? Even when you get really, really confident in your price and you've been in business for a long time, you still are going, mm, could it be better? Is, is there a sweet spot that I could maximize or optimize that would increase conversions and, and meet all of my objectives for my business, my product, my service? It's just this ongoing experiment, which can really kind of mess with your head because you never know if you're doing it right. I don't want to be too expensive and offend people and, and cut people out that need help. And I don't want to be too cheap. And, and what if I'm just like losing money on the deal or people don't take me seriously? And, and, and how do I even decide what people will pay? How do I even decide what this is worth? It's hard. Setting your prices is hard. It's confusing. It's overwhelming. So today, we are going to talk about how to set your prices and specifically how to set the price that is right for you, your business, your audience, your offering, your brand, your season, and your objective. So today is going to be really, really tactical. I'm going to give you seven questions to ask yourself to figure out the price that is right for you and your business and your offerings. And then I'm going to give you three rules to follow no matter what price you land on. Okay, so we're going to cover a lot of tactical things today. And because I know I talk fast and because I don't want you to have to take notes to keep up with me, I have created a free pricing guide for you. This has all the notes from today's episodes and some bonus exercises for you to set your price. You can get that by going to businessbootcampshow.com. So go to businessbootcampshow.com to download your free pricing guide. It's going to have the notes from today. But let's go ahead and dive into my seven questions to ask yourself to start to get an idea of the price that's right for you. Are you ready? Number one, what type of brand do you want to be? What type of brand do you want to be? How do you want to be positioned in the market? There are a lot of ways to position yourself and the type of brand that you are will inform the price that you set. For example, in my course, Content Creator Academy, I walk people through this branding template where you make some decisions about your brand. Are you more economical or more luxurious? Is it more everyday person or is it more elite and exclusive? And as you identify the type of brand that you are and want to be, it's going to inform your price. Because if you want to work with a high-end client and you want to be seen as a very elite, exclusive, high-end, expensive, quality brand, you can't price cheap because that doesn't match that. So start by looking at yourself, your personality, your values, your business, the, the brand of your business, which probably reflects you as a person, and decide the type of brand that you are, the type of brand that you want to be. When you get clarity around that, when you write some adjectives of the type of brand that you want to be, it's going to bring some clarity to your pricing. It's going to begin to narrow the range of what you should charge because you begin to see, oh, because I'm this type of brand, I should charge this much. So the first question you ask yourself is what type of brand do you want to be? When I worked at Ramsey, I was a part of the Ramsey brand. And that obviously is a brand that is more affordable. They're working with people digging their way out of debt. And so it's more on the economical side. So my courses at Ramsey were like $100. Well, when I left Ramsey, I decided that I wanted to change my brand. I knew my value. I knew my worth. I knew the industry I was going into with training speakers. And so my very first course that I put out after leaving Ramsey was $1,200 and then increased six months later to $1,500. And that's my signature course, Stop Winging It, which trains people in speaking and presenting. 
So I made a jump from a $100 course to a $1,500 course really, really quickly. Did I lose some people? Yeah. But I knew this is the type of brand that I am and that I want to be, and my price should reflect that. But that's not the only question you ask yourself, because I know what you're thinking, but what about the value? But what about, what about, what about? We've got more questions, so stick with me. Number two, what is the value of your offer? What's the value? What's the value of the results that you promise and deliver on? What's the value of the transformation? What's the value of the product? Now, in product-based businesses, there's a smaller range for this. So for example, if you make pies, people expect to spend between $10 and $40 for a pie. If you've got a $200 pie, like they better be a magic pie that makes me lose weight, y'all. Like there's a smaller range. If you sell toothbrushes, there's a smaller range of what people expect to pay for a toothbrush. When you're in a service-based business, this range is wide open. It really is. You've got keynote speakers that will do a one-hour presentation for free, and you've got keynote speakers that are $250,000 for an hour keynote. You've got photographers that will do your wedding for free, and you've got photographers that are $50,000 for an hour with them. There's a much wider range in the service-based business, but here's what I want to, to help you with this. When you're in the service-based industry, and you're not just marking up your cost of goods like product-based businesses usually do. When you're in the service-based business, I don't want you to ask yourself, what do I want to make per hour? This is a common mistake of service-based businesses. They think I'm a photographer. What do I want to make per hour? That's what I'm going to charge. No, no, no. I want you to ask yourself, what is the value of the service I provide? What is the value of the service I provide? What's the value of the transformation? If you're a counselor, what's the value of mended relationships? What's the value of, of, of the transformation in the family because of your counseling sessions. In my world with um, speaking, so I train people in speaking and presenting. I have multiple courses that help people with this. I do one-on-one -on -one coaching with it, them and so on. What's the value of me training someone to give an unbelievable hour keynote presentation? Well, starting level speakers in, in, in the business world are making $3,000 for an hour keynote. That's probably average for beginner business speakers. $3,000. So if I teach them how to give an unbelievable presentation, how to get booked as a speaker and give an unbelievable keynote where they're going to get rebooked because they were so good, what's the value of what I've just taught them? They're getting an ROI from my $1,500 course instantly. So don't ask yourself what you want to make per hour. Ask yourself, what's the value of the transformation and results that I provide? So what is the value of your offer? Number three, what type of client do you want to work with? What type of client is your ideal client? Low price points attract low income clients and high price points attract high income clients. It's just the reality. But when you're working with a low income client, there's a race to the bottom where when things need, need to get cut and they're tight on their budget, you're going to get cut. There is no ceiling when you're pricing more expensively. When you're working with a high income client, there's no ceiling. They just... There's no top to it. So I want to challenge you on thinking about who you want to work with. I heard this quote referenced recently in a book that I'm listening to right now, an audiobook, And they said the $500 client says this. How is this going to help me? How is this going to transform my life? How is this? How are we going to make, make a huge difference in my life? Are you sure it's going to be worth it? How much time do I get of you? How much are you going to help me? On and on and on, all the questions. That's what the $500 client asks. The $10,000 client says, here's the check. And it's the truth, y'all. It's the truth. You need to think about what type of client you want to work with. Of course, there's a very natural byproduct of this, which is if you want to work with high income clients, there are just simply less of them. There are less people that can afford high price point items. So you have less people at that level, but you need to think through what is that sweet spot for you? What is the type of client that you want to work with? And you should price for that client. The person that has the problem that you're solving and they have the money to pay what you're charging. They want to pay what you're charging. There are people you are missing out on because you're priced too cheap. And if you would increase your prices, you would actually attract a better client and maybe even more clients. I worked with a woman that was a photographer back in my business boutique days, and she was so low priced that she actually doubled her prices. So she didn't increase it by 20 or 30%. She doubled her prices because she realized she was priced so low for my teaching and training. And after doubling her prices, she tripled her revenue. Now, you don't have to be a math expert to do the math there. She actually got more clients at the high price point. 
So you need to think through who you want to work with and who wants to pay the price that you're offering. Number four, how many people do you want to work with? How many people do you want to work with? Do you want to have a high quantity of people and maybe a low touch, low service level, um, low customization? Or do you want low quantity of people but high touch? I've done both. For example, my books, that's low touch. I don't interact with you if you buy my book and read my book. My book is $20. My books have sold hundreds of thousands of copies. That's low touch for me, but it's a $20 book, so it's a low price point, high quantity of people. As many people as want to can buy those books. It never affects me. So that is a high quantity, low price point, but also low touch. Okay, let me show you a different extreme. Last year, I led a mastermind, and this was $1,000 a month to be in a small group coaching experience with me. Only 15 people signed up. I only invited people out of my Stop Winging It class, and from those people that were invited, 15 people signed up. Few people were invited, and even fewer people could afford that price point of $1,000 a month. But because it was so few people, it was high touch for me. I was very customized in my coaching with small group. I was in the weeds of their business with them, helping them build out their business funnel. It was very high touch, but very low quantity because less people can afford that higher price point. So you get to decide how many people do you want to work with? If you want to work with a lot of people, you need to price on the lower end because that will attract more people. Less people can afford the expensive. And if you want to work with less people, like when I left Ramsey, I did. I wanted to work with less people and give them a more customized experience, then you can price higher and you will attract less people at that price point. Less people can afford the higher price products. And so you need to think through quantity as you're setting your prices. Number five, what is the average price for similar offers in your industry or in your location? This should not determine your price, but it should inform it. Okay, so you need to know what is the range in my industry? What are people charging for um, sweaters at boutiques? You know, if you're in the product-based business, it's going to be easier because you've got a, a markup from your cost of goods with your inventory and overhead and so on. It's a more of a math formula if you're in the product-based business. If you're in the service-based business, online business, or have a service-based component to your business, even if, if it's primarily product-based, then you think through, okay, what's, what's normal in this industry? What do people charge for courses? What do people charge for coaching groups? What do people charge for memberships? And you're still going to find a range. There are courses that are $100, which I've done at Ramsey. There are courses that are thousands and thousands of dollars. You get to decide where you want to fall. You get to decide what is average in your industry and let that inform where you're falling. You don't want to be the cheapest. You may not want to be the most expensive, but you probably don't want to fall way outside the range of your industry. That's probably a red flag that something's off unless you have some really good basis justification for it and so on. Because people will, will ask, well, why is your course so much more expensive? And they probably will just ignore it if it's so much cheaper. They won't value it. So for example, I have a membership, which is an online coaching group, and it is for larger groups, and it's called the Goal Getters Club. It's $97 a month. Now, I was very intentional at setting the price at $97 a month. I want this to be way more affordable than the mastermind that I just led. It's going to be less customization, obviously, because it's a larger group. But because it's more affordable, I'm able to help more people. Well, $100 a month is pretty average for a online large group membership in the online business space, $97 a month. But what's so intentional about $97 is it's under $100. So the psychology of that is, well, it's not even $100 a month. So for people that are in my target market, at my income level, at the revenue level of the businesses I'm working with, $100 a month to get coaching with me every month is a no-brainer. That's no big deal. They're, they're, not, they're not scraping pennies together to pay this. That's not my target market. So think through what's average in your industry and then set your price somewhere in that that makes sense for you, your business, your brand, who you want to work with, the quantity of people you want, you want to work with, and so on. All right, number six, how much time does it take you? Not actual time just at the time of fulfilling the service or service-based businesses, but all the time. So if I'm booked for an hour keynote presentation, that's not just an hour of my time. There is the time to prepare the talk. There's the time to prepare the slides. There's the time on the phone call with the client learning about the audience. There's the time booking travel. There's the time actually traveling. There's the time away from my kids in hotel room. There's a lot of time that goes into me delivering an hour keynote presentation in another state on someone else's stage. So what is that for you? If you're a photographer, you know it's not just the time that you're physically taking photos. 
There's the editing and the uploading and the talking to the client ahead of time about all their dreams and goals for the shoot and so on. So take into consideration emails, scheduling, the back and forth, the customer service, take into consideration everything that goes into fulfilling that service, serving that client. What is the time it takes? How much time does it take you? And take that into consideration to make sure that your price is set in a way that you're actually making money. And then number seven, of course, you need to consider your cost of goods. This is not last because it's least important. It's last because it's the least exciting. What, what are your cogs, your cost of goods sold? This would be your, your physical products. If you are selling shirts or purses or journals or whatever the thing is, what are the materials or the ingredients or whatever that goes into you creating that product or fulfilling that product? Of course, you want to take into consideration as well, packaging, shipping, all supplies. All supplies that goes into it, you need to consider that to make sure you're actually making money in your price. Now, after you answer all these questions, you're going to come up with a price range that is something you experiment with. It's not a set it and forget it. You're always experimenting and trying new things. It's not a formula and it's not objective. It's always going to feel subjective and you're always going to make a couple people mad. There's always going to be someone saying you're priced too high or you're priced too low. You've got to navigate this in your business in finding what is right for you, finding confidence in the price that's right for you, your brand, your values, who you want to help, what you're offering, who you want to be, and what is right even for you in this season. What you charge today may be different than what you charge in five years and that's okay depending on the amount of people you want to work with and the type of brand that you want to be and so on. When I first left Ramsey, I only offered one-on-one -on -one coaching, which starts at $3,000 a month and goes up to $10,000 a month for one-on-one -on -one coaching with me. And then I added a course, which was $1,500. And then I'm now adding lower price point items like courses that are $200 or a membership that's $100 a month. I'm still doing those high price point things, but I'm diversifying my offering. So now I'm able to help people at multiple income levels and in multiple ways. You can do the same thing. But the most important thing is that you find a price or prices that are right for you. I do want to challenge you though. The only difference between you and another business charging more than you is that they had the confidence to do so. They had the courage and confidence to do so. So stop looking at pricing as just a mathematical formula. It's much more than that. It's an exercise in strategy and confidence. Now, I told you I was going to give you three rules to follow no matter your price. So I want to end with these three rules that are just going to help you regardless of where you land, regardless of the answers to your questions. I want to give you three rules to follow no matter what your price is. Number one, price higher than you think. Just do it, y'all. Just price higher than you think. You're going to be all squirmy and insecure and imposter syndrome and feel weird about it. Just do it. And you know what's going to happen? Literally nothing. No one's going to blink. No one's going to freak out. And then you're going to go, oh my gosh, it worked. It worked. Price higher than you think. You, in fact, will probably just attract a better client, maybe even attract more clients, and then you're making more money. You're welcome. Send me your thank you notes later. You're going to make more money. Price higher than you think. In general, especially women, always undercharge. Just trust me on this one. Price higher than you think. Rule number two, offer more value, not discounts. Offer more value to incentivize conversions, not discounts. Don't let discounts and sales and coupon codes be your technique to get more people in the door. That is going to devalue your brand and you're going to train them to expect only discounts. You're going to train them only to buy from you when you're running a sale. Think of Shutterfly. Have you ever paid full price for Shutterfly? No. Why? They got discount codes all over the entire earth as confetti. Just everywhere you go, there's discount codes for Sh Shutterfly. You know you're never going to pay full price for Shutterfly because they've trained you to use discount codes and coupons. Do not train your customers to be cheap, think cheap, wait for the sale. Don't train them that way. Instead, offer more value. Offer them bonuses, extras, incentives. For example, when I'm opening enrollment for Stop Winging It, my signature speaking course, which is $1,500, if you sign up on day one to incentivize those initial purchases, you get my Start Getting Booked course free. Start Getting Booked is my course teaching you how to get booked as a speaker. It's a $400 course. You get it free if you sign up on day one. That is adding value to you to incentivize conversions. I didn't say sign up on day one and you get it for $1,000. Don't let price be your technique to increase conversions. Add value, add bonuses, add extras, add tools, templates, whatever, time with you to incentivize those conversions instead of adding the discount. You don't want to train them to look for the sale. Maintain the value of your brand 
and just add more value through those incentives. And then number three, offer options when you can. Offer options when you can. So as you build out your offerings in your business, you want to have a variety of offerings. For example, if you listen to my podcast and you only listen to my podcast, it's free. You've paid nothing and you've got help. If you do what I've taught you today, you will make more money in your business and you have not spent any money with me. That's fine. If you spend $20 with me, you can buy my book. I have books for $20. Okay, well, that is a $20 price point. That's an offering. I have courses that are $200, $300, $400. I've got a coaching group that's $100 a month. So you're seeing we've got different price points from free, $20 book, $100 a month coaching group, $300 course, I've got a $1,500 course, and then I've got a $3,000 one-on-one coaching offering starting point. But even within my one-on-one coaching packages, it starts at $3,000 and goes up to $10,000. Let me tell you something fascinating. Everyone picks the middle. Everyone picks the middle packages. So I've got $3,000, $5,000, $7,500, and $10,000 a month to do one-on-one coaching with me. Everyone picks 5,000 or 7,500. There's a psychology of the middle. Everyone wants the middle package, which means you need to have a low end and a high end so that people can choose that middle. People want the middle. Even when I go get pedicures, y'all, it's like, which package do you want? The middle? The middle. Why? I don't even know what's included. Is it a scrub? It is, a, is, it, is it a lotion? I don't know. I just pick the middle. I don't want to be the cheapest and I don't want to be the most expensive. And most people are exactly like that. Most of your customers don't want the cheapest and they don't want the most expensive. They want the middle. They want to be average, which means you need to have a low price point, a high price point, and a middle price point so that they can choose the middle. Build out your offerings where you've got a middle, which is awesome because the middle is probably still going to be higher than what you plan to charge anyway. And then when you offer these options, you are creating stability in your business. You're creating a sense of security in your customer because they can choose what they they pay and how they work with you because of the different levels that you've offered. All right. Are you still here? It's really amazing if so. You've done great. Listen, I have given you seven questions to ask yourself to find your perfect price and three rules for you to follow so you can get more sales at any price. I have covered a lot and I know you want these notes. So don't forget to go to businessbootcampshow.com to download your free pricing guide. And as you continue to work through these questions, work through these rules and these exercises I've given you, you will be on your way to setting your perfect price. All right, y'all, that's it for this week's episode of Business Bootcamp. But before you go, please follow this podcast channel, subscribe to this show and share it with your friends. I wanna help the show grow. And I know you wanna help other people get the help they need in their business as well. And then be sure to tune in here every Tuesday to get the practical steps you want and the tough love truth you need to succeed in business. I'm Christy Wright, and I'll see you next time.